second-year player will have the biggest improvement. I'll say Levi and Uzurike. I think he has to have the biggest improvement because he didn't have such a great year because of injury and just out of shape and all that stuff. Is there any different player you guys have on, on here, second-year improvement? Just throw it out there. See, I, I'd say I'd say iffy. I'm not saying this is as bad, but I think yeah. this year you'll see the consistency and hopefully you'll see him, you know, take those flashes and turn it into a first-team player. So if he gets the snaps and he stays healthy, I see him improving vastly this year. That's just how high his ceiling is. I love the hashtag FGBs, by the way. Throw that in the comment section. Spam it. Spam it. We love it over here. Who gets the most sacks? Who do you got, Mark? Um, I'm going to say Charles Harris. I think he's going to shine in his defense and this new attacking defense. So um, I like Charles Harris, seven and a half sacks last year. And that kind of, you know, sit sit back kind of defense. This is more attacking this year. I think he's going to get 10 sacks plus. Ooh, Dion. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm basic, man. I'm just going to Hutchinson. Defense rookie uh, of the year, man. He'll get it. I like it. Who do you got there? Mark stole my thunder there because I've got exactly the same thing. I think Charles Harris will do it. He got seven and a half sacks on a team last year where there was no other pass rushers with him because everyone was injured and the interior was shoddy. This year, we've got a lot better interior and we're going to have Romeo and we're going to have Aiden with him. So he's going to get a lot more one-on-ones. He's going to get a lot more opportunities. If he could do seven and a half on last year's line, he'd get well into double figures this year. Yeah. Dan Campbell's got the biggest sacks on the team. Um, let's go. Probably. <laughs> Out of this year's draft class, which player is unlikely to make this team? Oh, out of this draft class. Love the freaking question there. I'll try it. Man, this one's tough. This one, this one's tough. Oh, man. You know what? I'm, I'll defer because I'll defer. Anthony, who do you think doesn't make this team? Check. I think it'll be Chase Lucas, purely because he was drafted in the seventh round and he's entering a very competitive cornerback room. I mean, we could list six or seven guys we could put in there already. So I think he'll be the one that struggles just simply because of the depth of his position. Other guys like Kirby don't have to deal with that level of competition to get on this team. He does. So I think he's going to struggle. What do you got, Dion? 100%. Uh, but I would, I, you know, I would. I don't know if I can bring myself to say James Houston. I want to say James Houston, but I don't think I can do it. So I'll go Chase Lucas, too. Mark. See, I'm going to say James Houston, man. I don't, And I like him a lot. Yeah. I like him a lot, but I think he's a little bit positionless right now. Um, I kind of, they kind of showed that a little bit during those, during those mini camps and those OTAs. You know, they had him in the linebacker room. It looked like he was struggling a bit as a linebacker. It was early, though. It was just short little camps. And then they put him in. Then they put him in the D line room, and, and, and we didn't hear too much about it. Um, I guess he did beat on um, Obena Ize a little bit, but you know that's another undrafted guy. So I think he's a guy that's. I love his. I love him getting to the quarterback, but he's positionless a little bit right now for me. So I, I, I think he could be a guy that could be on the bubble. I'm gonna say they all make the team. I'm going to just go out there and try to be a little bit bold here. I, I, I want them all to make the team. I like the concept of getting younger. And when you invest draft capital, I want them to make the team even a seventh rounder for the Detroit Lions. I would I would take Chase, Chase Lusa. I know it may not be smart, but I'd probably take him over even Will Harris just because of I kind of know what I have in Will Harris. And uh, Chase, Chase Lucas, maybe I don't know 100% sure. Will Romeo and Julian Aquara make the team – if so, what position will they be playing? Mark, what do you think, man? Romeo and well, Romeo is definitely making the team. Well, Romeo's you, a lock. Yeah, yeah. he's a lock. Like, Romeo's a lock. Julian could be a guy that you know that could be on the bubble again too, man. Because I remember Aaron Glenn during the Senior Bowl, man. He he came out with a with a quote about uh, Julian Aquara saying he knows what he needs to do to make this, you know, to make a difference next year. So. Um, you know, I think that was throwing a little bit of shade his way because, you know, he does not play the run well whatsoever. He can get to the quarterback, though, and I think that's highly valued. But Julian, you know, he he's another guy that could be on the bubble. Mm -hmm. Do you think he makes the team, Anthony? Who, Julian? Yeah, and, and if he does, what position would he be primarily used as? 
Oh, yeah, maybe linebacker. I'd, I'd, I'd have him as an edge rusher because, I, you know, when you're playing the outside linebacker role, you've got to have run defense on you. You know, when you've got Charles Harris, um, Aiden Hutchinson, Romeo Quara in front of you, you can bring Julian in in, you know, obvious passing situations, get him to rush, rush the pass and do what he's good at. But if you're playing him at outside linebacker, you, you need him to be able to defend the run. It's something we've struggled really bad with over the years. And I just I just don't like him when he's playing against the run. So I'd rather have him in a depth position somewhere where we can get him to attack the passer than have him in a position of seniority where he's got to defend the run. I just don't think that's his thing. Biggest disappointment. I'm not sure if he's talking about this year or, or from last year. I'll just kind of add it on from last year to this year. I think my biggest disappointment – I know this is going to look like kicking a dead horse, but Tim Boyle, I expected him to be better than what he was as a backup quarterback when we signed him. I really did. And, man, he he didn't perform well last year, and it just seems like in OTAs and minicamp, all you heard was negative. Like, this guy's just throwing interceptions. To me, so that's, a, that's a bit of a disappointment. What about you, Dosa Dion? For this, for this year? Or are you saying based yeah, on last year? Like yeah, but I'm not really 100% sure. It just says biggest disappointment, so I kind of just mixed it in. Yeah. Um, I would say it has been Okuda, for sure, because we just haven't seen him. For man, This is a tough question, man. That's really tough. Yeah. I don't want to put anybody in that category because I, 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 I don't know, man. I can't answer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's a tough one, Anthony. It's tough. <laughs> Who's your biggest disappointment? My biggest disappointment, the fact that there's no alternative jerseys out yet. We need some new uniforms, man. Like that's, that's our big disappointment. All these teams coming out with them. We, you know, back to black, baby. We need them back. Yeah, man, I, I like that one, man. And then every team seems to be coming out with their alternate jerseys. Every day a new one is coming out there for sure. So, I, yeah, that's a great one. Hashtag FGB. Do you guys think that Godwin Igwafumble will be productive? I don't think he's going to make the team. I think he'll be productive on the practice squad. I just don't see him making the football team, Mark. Yeah, I think there's a chance he could be another guy getting cut, too. Uh, you know, his ball security, man, is just very, very lacking. It's not good at all. So, um, a guy that's been moved from safety to running back, he's not going to he's not gonna take any reps away in, in the running back room. So, he could be gone, too, as well. I think he'll be cut, actually, to tell you the truth. Good question here by Murdoch. He says, how many kickoffs get returned for touchdowns? I don't think we had any last year. But you want to know, I'm going to say one this year. I think we get one return for touchdown. It's just difficult because of the new rules with kicking uh, closer than what yeah. it used to be. And it just kind of goes out of the end zone every single time. Anyone got any specific number they want to throw out there? No. No? All right. Does Hutch <laughs> absolutely work Riley Reef when we face the Bears? Yes. I, I, I don't know where, exactly what they're going to do over there where he's going to play for the Chicago Bears. Their whole offensive line is an absolute dumpster fire. So I think whoever is going up against him, he's not what he used to be. He's not, he's not even what he used to be with the Minnesota Vikings. I think that he, he's going to get worked a little bit there. Anthony, what do you think? I think he absolutely does work him. I, I put this on our Twitter earlier, but I think this little battle here is going to be a microcosm of the next few years for us. This is Detroit Lions' future wiping away the stink of Detroit Lions' past. Riley Reef is in the past from bad times. Aiden Hutchinson is the bright, new, sparkly future for us. He's going he's gonna to have his way with Riley Reef. He was injured all last year. He's 33. You know, he's lost a step in there. Yeah, we're still going to kill that Bears offensive line. They think they got good because they got him here. No, they didn't. They just got a stopgap guy for one year, and Aiden will show him up. And, folks, we got 120 in the building with 48 likes. Let's get to 75 likes. Also on my channel on Thursday, we're live with Adam Baydoon. We're going to have some fun, man. We're going we're gonna to get after it. Adam Baydoon's a funny dude. He's going to be on the channel. Was Prater's decline due to Jack Fox holding? No, Prater is actually having issues at Arizona as well. The Arizona Cardinals last year. He was missing some kicks. I don't know what's going on with him. Maybe he's just getting a little bit older, but I don't think it had to do with holding. And I don't think he can do anything else but himself. What up? What's up, yayo? Yeah, Appreciate you. Been up 
been up in here for a long time on my my channel now in here appreciate it if you had to have one of our coaches play who would you pick Ooh, i like the question who's that quarterback sorry i was gonna say who's that quarterback that we just picked up as a a coach make him our backup quarterback jt barrett here we go jt bear make backup quarterback um but in all honesty i'd go with deuce staley let's get that let's get that hard running in there what do you got, Mark? Yeah. I'll say Dan Campbell, man. I'll say Dan Campbell, man. Beating everybody up in the blocking department. You know, underrated catcher. You know, mm -hmm. why not, man? Big man. Dan Campbell for sure. Dosa Dion, man. Who you got? Can't be Rory. Yeah. Uh, that's... <laughs> Let's that's, 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 that's put Tom Walsh out there, man. I want to see what he's got. You know, Mark. See some of the moves. Yeah, get Mark out there. Yeah. Yeah, Mark, man. <laughs> Tom Walsh doppelganger right there, man. Ah. <laughs> you know, literally, Mark could go to practice and he wouldn't need oh. no pass or anything. He'd just walk right on the walking field. On the field. I'm just with walking the, on the field with a headset. Harrington yeah. jersey on. Like, yeah, yeah. From Bart Motors. Girl. <laughs> the real Todd Wash, he may he gonna retire like Vince McMahon. Yeah. Blau <laughs> over Boyle. I will take Blau over Boyle. I, we'll do rapid fire. What do you got, Mark? Blau or Boyle? Who do you want as number two? I got Blau, man. I got Blau. I'm done with Boyle. And the dose. Boyle. Okay. I like Anthony. Boyle. Bang, man. All right. Two, so two Blaus and two Boils. If you think that Blau should be the backup quarterback, put B. If you think Boyle should be the quarterback, put B. <laughs> In the comments. There you go. <laughs> that narrows it down. It's called a win-win <laughs> situation right there. If you could only have one, would you rather extend Hawkinson or Amani O? Amani O. I, I would extend him right now. He's right now, and he's paid extremely under from what he's doing. He's getting paid actually around 300th of cornerbacks in the NFL. I don't even know how that's possible. Jeffrey Akuda gets paid more than him. Even Mel Fonwu gets paid more than him. Mike Hughes get paid more than him. Extend Amani Awarie. Anthony, what do you think? See, I, I'd extend Hawkinson because I think, well, in my ideal world, if this season goes right and if he develops into a cornerback one prospect and Akuda comes back and plays as well as he can, then you don't have to pay Amani. Because he's going to want good money after two good years. So in terms of the team, we've, we've got no one coming in to replace Hawk. And I still think the mismatch skill that he brings you in his position is vital to how this offense works. Whereas, and you know, we've got no one to come in and replace that. Whereas we do with Amani. So I take in Hawk. I pay him. Dose. It's a tough question, but you broke it down well. Because if you go off what we've seen, how can you not extend Amani? But at the same time, I'm with you. I think TJ Hawkinson is just – I just don't think you can come from one-on-one. -on -one. I just don't see you winning that matchup very often. So I think this year you're, we're going to start to see that. But obviously when you start to get to the price amounts, Amani might end up being cheaper. Perfect. Perfect.